Croquet Your Way, presenting extraordinary croquet events. This video will give you an idea of how players will participate in a Croquet Your Way Backyard 9 Wicket Croquet Tournament. Croquet Your Way events are held at venues of all sizes and on grass surfaces that may offer competitors interesting challenges. You will get tips on how the balls and teams are paired, the order of scoring the wickets, and shot making and strategy tips. For this, we have asked two of the leading croquet teaching professionals in the United States, Bob Kroger and Ted Prentice, to guide us through. Croquet Your Way events use a six ball format, either in three teams of two players or as six individuals playing against each other. The order of play is blue, red, black, yellow, green, and orange, no matter if it's team play or individual play. When team play is used, one team plays blue and yellow, another team plays red and green, and the final team play black and orange. Now let's look at the order in which you score the wickets. In a full game played to completion, each ball will score a total of 14 wickets and two stake points. Croquet Your Way tournaments usually use time limits. At the end of time, whoever has the most wicket points wins the game, keeping in mind that you get one point per wicket scored per ball and then add the scores of the balls on each side to get a composite score. To start the game, you place your ball midway between the stake and the first wicket. Let's watch as we see the blue ball run the course. Once you have scored the 14th wicket, that's the last wicket, all that remains is to hit the finishing stake, which you do if you are playing as an individual. This would make you the winner, assuming you are the first to do so. Some players continue play until only one player remains, having not hit the stake. Most, however, have the winner be the first person to stake out, which ends the game. If you were playing team croquet, you would be what is called a rover after scoring the last wicket. The idea of a rover is to not stake out immediately, but to help your team member or members in the case of a threesome. This can be done by making plays that hinder the opponent's progress, but help your partner. Only through experience will you learn the particular strategies required. Now that we know how to set up a croquet court and the order in which the wickets are scored, let's talk a little bit about the technique of swinging the mallet. Here is a technique that most players instinctively use who have never received formal instruction in croquet. Specifically, the hands are separated and the feet wide. While this style might be naturally comfortable, it really isn't that accurate due to the bottom hand steering the swing off line and the feet not positioning the body in the most accurate way. Now note how the hands are brought together at the top of the mallet shaft and the feet much closer together, parallel to the line of the swing of the mallet. The swing is generated from the shoulders with the wrist being very relaxed, not inhibiting the back and forward pendulum-like motion. With some practice, this approach will get you some very accurate results. Here is a view from the side which shows the perfect arc created by the pendulum-like motion. Notice how the swing is very even tempoed, the upper body very still, the head not lifting up, and the follow-through very pronounced, with the hands finishing just in front of the forehead upon completion of the follow-through. Like golf, it is important that the swing be in time and not hurried. 
Here is a close-up of the grip used in this particular example, this being for a right-handed player. The left hand is placed on top with the knuckles forward and the right hand just below it with the palm forward. This is called the standard grip. This next grip is called the Solomon grip and this will have the bottom hand now match the top hand with the knuckles forward. This grip allows for a very big backswing which some players might favor who need a little greater distance when the grass might be a little long. You can see many similarities to the first example when we saw the hands together. The feet are close and parallel to the line of the swing. And then from the side, again, very similar. Upper body very still. Notice the pronounced follow throw and the very steady speed of swing. The third and final grip we'll look at is called the Irish grip. And this is the opposite of the Solomon grip with the palms forward with both hands. This is a very steady grip. However, it doesn't allow for a very big backswing, which can be problematic in long grass situations. If you have an abundance of strength, definitely give this grip a try. Again, notice the similarities to the first two examples. A nice uh, parallel feet, steady follow through, and uh, from the side, you can also see body still, steady swing, very, very important components to an accurate style. Just to review, the standard grip, the Solomon grip, and the Irish grip. Now let's see how all this technique can be put to practical use. Many successful players will go back from their ball and stalk the target ball, that is, get their body and feet aligned. The distance you should be from your ball as you set your stance is determined by placing the mallet very near your ball so that the shaft will be perpendicular to the ground at impact and your foot position is comfortable to make a good stroke. The distance your feet are from the ball will vary from player to player, style to style, but you want to be comfortable. Here we can see the practice swing swinging along the line of the feet prior to the stroke. When one ball hits another, it is known as a roquet. When you roquet a ball, you get two additional shots. Now let's see how all of this comes together. Another technique that is worthwhile knowing about is casting. Casting is swinging your mallet head over your ball, aiming at the target, with the emphasis on getting the swing in time and in line to the target. But instead of placing the mallet head on the ground, as in the previous example, the player lowers the mallet while in motion and strikes the ball. A number of the top croquet players in the world use this technique. After a roquet is made, you earn two additional shots. You can take these extra shots in one of four ways. You can take the first of the two shots from where your ball came to rest after the roquet. You can put your ball up to and including a mallet head's distance from the ball you roqueted and take your first shot. You can put your ball in contact with the ball you roqueted and put your foot or hand on your ball and send the rocade ball. And finally, you can put your ball against the ball you rocade and have both balls move in one shot. This is known as a croquet shot. You can then play your second shot which may involve scoring a wicket or roquet another ball. Remember, when you score your wicket, you get one additional shot. 
Another point regarding roquets, you can roquet all the balls once per turn. However, if you score your wicket, you can roquet them again in that same turn. That holds true with any wicket you make in that one same turn. We will see an example at the end of this video where several wickets are scored in one turn by roquetting the balls effectively. We're now going to focus on the fourth option after a roquet is made, the croquet shot. Again, the croquet shot is where you want your ball and the ball you are sending to go to desirable locations. What controls the proportionate distance your ball will travel relative to the distance of the ball you are sending is where you put your hands on the mallet shaft and where you place your feet relative to your ball. Specific things for you to know are number one, the higher you have your hands placed on the mallet shaft and the further back you stand from your ball, the less distance your ball will travel relative to the ball you are sending. Two, the lower you put your hands down the mallet shaft and the closer you stand to your ball, the greater distance your ball will travel compared to the ball you are sending. Three, how much backswing you use, or to think of it another way, how much power you put into your swing will determine how far the ball you are sending travels. Four, how you place your ball in contact with the rocade ball, that's the ball you are sending, will determine the direction the ball you are sending. Here's a graphic that shows exactly this. Notice how red your ball, or the striker's ball, is in contact with the yellow ball, the ball you are sending. Imagine a line that runs through the center of the two balls, shown here with the arrow. When the mallet strikes red, yellow will travel in the direction of the arrow. This will hold true no matter how the mallet is aimed. The ball you are sending will travel along the line of the centers of the two balls. The fifth and final point is the direction your ball will travel is determined by the aim of the mallet. Here is an example where red wants to travel to the right of yellow, shown here by the right hand arrow. This is called a split shot. To have red travel in this direction, the mallet must be aimed midway between the two lines shown here with the arrow in the middle. If red wanted to go in the same direction as yellow, it would aim along the line of the arrow shown here. Let's take a look at a split shot in action. Notice how the striker aimed midway between the lines of travel and in this case wanted the striker ball to be in position to score the wicket and have the ball that was sent be on the other side of the wicket so it could be used to get more shots from. Another thing to note with this example is how little distance the striker ball traveled relative to the ball that was sent. This is a good example of a stop shot and why that shot was appropriate in this situation. Now let's see three more examples of croquet shots from a profile position. The first of these will be another stop shot. Here you can see the hands together high on the mallet shaft and the feet slightly back when doing the stop shot. Also, there is no follow through. Here we see the half roll, this shot named for its result, the striker ball going about half the distance of the ball being sent. Note how the hands separate and are lowered and the feet brought forward. This shot has the mallet head striking the striker's ball above the equator or the horizontal axis of your ball, which imparts top spin, thereby adding proportionate distance to the striker ball relative to the ball being sent. Please note there is no follow through on any of the shots that have topspin. 
finally we see the pass roll where the hands are really lowered down and the feet brought very forward. This imparts even more topspin, making the striker ball go further than the ball being sent. There are numerous other croquet shots possible where you can get all sorts of proportionate distance depending on where you put your hands and your feet. Of course, the tactical circumstance will dictate what will be the correct shot to use, but you will want to experiment so that you can learn all the variations. Early in the video, I mentioned for each wicket scored, the player gets one point, and for each stake point scored, you get a point. So with 14 wickets and two stake points, the total score for one ball is 16. And as mentioned earlier, if you're playing team croquet, you would add your team's score along with yours to get a composite score. Now we're going to see how play is made. In a moment, you'll see Teddy Prentice playing the yellow ball. For our demonstration, we're going to be using the four ball option. That's blue, red, black, and yellow. Remember, blue and black are a team in Team Croquet against red and yellow. So, with this in mind, we'll say that Teddy is playing the red and yellow balls and his opponent playing the blue and black. Um, blue begins midway between the stake and the first wicket. Blue scores the first wicket, scores the second wicket, and then shoots to position at the third wicket. With red now to play, red does score the first wicket, scores the second wicket, and then we'll try to hit blue to get two shots at the third. Red tries this, but just narrowly misses. With black now to play, black does score the first wicket, but has a little bit of a problem scoring the second wicket and unfortunately stops right up against it. Now we're going to see how Teddy takes advantage of black's mistake, and you'll be quite impressed with how, using certain techniques that will be described, how Teddy will be able to make several wickets this turn. So Teddy, now playing yellow, black having just missed the second wicket, Teddy makes the first wicket with yellow, and rotates black to get two shots. Now watch what he does here to use the two shots. He's going to get position at the second wicket, and just put black a little bit to the side so that he can hit black again after he scores this wicket. He'll hit black, and he'll actually send it to the fourth wicket, so it'll be waiting for him after he makes the third, and we call this a pioneer ball, when you send a ball ahead one wicket from the one that you're going for. Notice a fairly big split shot. Teddy's ball went about a third of the distance there. We call that a drive shot in particular. Teddy then hits blue, and he's going to send blue to the other side of the third wicket as he gains a nice position on red so that he can bring red into play as well. And the idea is you want to get all the balls in play so you can use them, and this is the way that you can effectively make several wickets in a turn. We have a term for this called a four ball break. Teddy's yellow ball plus the three others, and it's a system by which you use all the balls and put them in very convenient places. Very, very clever play. Now, Teddy has just made the third wicket. Now, watch. He's going to send the blue ball up to the fifth wicket using a foot shot. Notice his ball stays right by red, obviously. So, blue is a pioneer ball at the fifth wicket, and he then rotates red down near black at the fourth wicket, the wicket in the middle. He's going to split red to the other side of the fourth as his ball comes to the black ball at the fourth wicket. And you can see a pattern is being established here. And once you recognize that pattern, you can really go to town. Notice Teddy used the uh, option of putting his ball a mallet head away from black. He was in position even at that point, shot through, and now he's going to send the black ball to the sixth wicket, again as a pioneer ball, 
basketball that's forging ahead waiting for him. And uh, Teddy then comes to the red ball, hits red, gets two shots, and is just going to continue this pattern. And uh, he'll end up making all the wickets in this one turn. Just a really clever play.